Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Uh, if you find this video helpful um, and new around here, please consider uh, clicking the like and subscribe. Uh, it really helps me out in making these videos. Um, so as the title says, uh, we're going to be working on the uh, Infiniti G35. Uh, so anything we do here will be the same for uh, 350Z. Uh, it will be very similar for the G37 and uh, 370Z also. Um, so uh, let me get in here and start it up first. And so you can hear the uh, miss. Um, and then we'll go from there. And I'll move to the back of the car. It'll be easier to hear it uh, within the exhaust. So. And so basically uh, what it started out with um, was a random stumble, uh, mostly at low RPM, uh, high throttle position or medium throttle. So like taking off from a red light or something like that, it would just uh, stumble every now and then. Um, then I finally got a check engine light uh, and then it was um, continuously missing. Uh, it seemed like just on one cylinder. But uh, first thing I did was um, I stopped by the gas station, filled it up with fresh gas just to make sure I didn't have uh, water or something like that in the fuel. Um, didn't help it at all. And then so I drove it home. Uh, it stumbled, you know, the same same stumble. Didn't get any worse. Didn't get any better. Um, <clears throat> whenever I whenever I start it, sometimes it's intermittent, so it it'll it'll crank normal and then it'll start stumbling. Uh, but whenever I go for a drive now. Uh, it basically stumbles, um, so um, I scanned it um, just with this little um, OBD2, so it plugs up under the dash here. Uh, this little module, it's an OBD2 scanner, Bluetooth. Um, you can get these offline, super cheap, you know, under $20, and they'll either have uh, software with them that you can install on your phone or you can download an app um, for free. There's some that are paid, but you can get it all for free as far as the app. Um, so I scanned it um, and uh, basically it gave a P0300 code, which is a random uh, misfire, and also gave a P0305. So that's a misfire on cylinder number five. Um, and what leads me to believe it's either your spark plug or cool pack. Um, I'm leaning towards cool pack uh, because it's an intermittent issue. So if it was something mechanical um, or even the spark plug itself, once it started skipping, you know, it's not gonna it's not gonna clear up. It's only gonna get worse. So uh, so what we're gonna do is um, I'm gonna go ahead and replace all the cool packs uh, just because they're all the same age. You know, they all get exposed to the same uh, environment. So if one goes, then they're just gonna slowly go out. Um, so we're gonna replace those while we're in there. We're gonna go ahead and put a new set of spark plugs in. Uh, might as well since you have to take off everything anyways to change the plugs. Uh, so we'll go over the parts and uh, tools that we'll use to do this job. Uh, should be pretty easily done. I haven't done it on this car yet, but uh, should be pretty easy to access everything. All right, so um, have the set of six spark plugs here. These are the uh, NGK Iridiums, uh, part number See if I can get it to focus on it. Uh, it's LFR5 AIX-11. Uh, the stock number is 4469. Uh, with these being iridium, uh, they come pre-gapped. So uh, don't try to gap them because you'll damage them. Uh, and then coil pack wise, I went with uh, Delphi coils. Uh, let's see, part number here if you need it. It's a GN10. 246-11B1. Um, went ahead and got six of those. Um, so hopefully I won't have this problem ever again. Um, they should last well over 100,000 miles. And All right, yeah. so first we're gonna start with pulling off this uh, top plastic cover to do that. Um, we're gonna unscrew oil cap. Uh, make sure you don't drop anything down in there. Um, you might wanna do that last. 
uh, and then there's 10 millimeter nuts and uh, I think these are bolts in the tube here so we'll take all those out take the oil cup cap off uh, pull this plastic piece and we'll go ahead and put the oil cap back on immediately um, and then we'll go from there All right, next we'll go ahead and uh, <coughs> take the uh, intake pipe off. Um, basically, we're trying to get to the coils. They're uh, underneath this wire lean. So there's uh, one, two, and then the third one in the back. Um, so we're gonna remove the intake pipe. <coughs> See if we can, uh, there's a couple bolts uh, holding in the brackets on the wire lean. Uh, looks like 10 millimeters. So we'll go ahead and do that on the uh, driver's side of the engine, <coughs> passenger side. Uh, looks like same thing we'll loosen this bolt here um, and uh, probably this one here on the front and should be able to move the wire loom out of the way enough to access the coils and uh, so we'll get the wire loom out of the way disconnect the coils um, get the coils pulled go ahead and pull the spark plugs <clears throat> install the new spark plugs install the new coils Put the wire loom back on, make sure all the connectors are hooked up, uh, put the intake back on, and then we'll give it a test start.
All right, so looking at the spark plug here, this is off of the uh, number one. It's the front driver's cylinder. Um, as you can tell, it still has a little bit of life, but it's uh, definitely not going to hurt replacing. So, so this is the uh, old plug. <coughs> And then this is the new um, iridium. So we'll go ahead and put that, uh, basically doing one cylinder at, one cylinder at a time, uh, replacing the spark plug and then putting the new coil pack on. All right, also I mentioned uh, have these uh, special sockets, they're uh, spark plug sockets. Um, and basically there's a little magnet <clears throat> in the very back. Uh, and so that keeps the spark plug seated. So that way you don't have to worry about it falling out. Um, especially helpful <clears throat> when putting the new plugs in. Uh, that way you don't have to worry about dropping it and then uh, damaging the electrode. So you can, it's easy to uh, thread it in that way. So as you can see, new spark plug, not going anywhere. Um, and I'll put these uh, sockets, uh, link in the description below uh, if you're interested in purchasing a set. And so there was another bracket um, here in the back, just below the throttle body. <clears throat> um, it's just a 10 millimeter bolt holding it in. Um, but I had to take it loose. It's got a couple wires connected to it, so I'm just gonna slide it out of the way. Um, take it loose, and that way we can access the uh, rear pull pack bolt on this side. Right in the last one on the driver's side. This was the most difficult one to get to just because you're kind of cramped on space and uh, wiring harness brackets kind of in the way.
Take a little bit of the balls, change the side so they're going to put it on the electrical and uh, tackle the tapes back up. Uh, pay attention to how you open them. If you get the wrong uh, fire on the wrong call pack, it's uh, not going to ruin it. and plug the mass here flow up also. So now we're gonna move to the passenger side and uh, do the same thing. All right, and this is the first cylinder on the passenger side.
Okay, I'm gonna mask it, I'm gonna pass it to your side. And this is where I would hate doing this job without those magnetic <coughs> sockets. So uh, I think it would have been impossible to not drop the spark plugs. So highly recommend those. And they're super cheap, so they're worth every penny. Okay, I'll leave that cold out just to give myself a little more room to work with. Um, the rear one on this side, it's kind of tight. I think we'll get it. We'll look like an extra person. And then now we can open it, okay. The rear one has a lot of oil on it. I think we may have a, uh, well maybe a valve cover gasket leak or something. Because it's leaking down from on the top. Let me inspect that one over there. Yeah, that'll be done for another day. We'll keep an eye on that. Make sure everything works.
All right, and then we'll go ahead and make sure uh, to get all of the wiring harness brackets back in place. So that should be it. We'll give it a look once over, open the garage door up and uh, start it, see if the issue cleared up and uh, clear the codes to see if any more codes pop up. There we go. Back to a nice smooth running engine and then uh, we'll go ahead and clear the codes to turn the check engine light off. Uh, then we'll go back up front and uh, put that plastic engine cover back on, clean up, and it'll be ready to go. Thanks for watching.